Hey guys, welcome to this lesson. So what makes this lesson unique is that it's got brackets, which we have looked at before, but now it's also got fractions, which we've just started looking at in the previous lesson. So now we're gonna combine that, okay? So you might be looking at this and you're like, okay, Kevin, so where do I start? And what I would say is let's get rid of those brackets, okay? So what we're gonna have here is minus 35 over three. We're not gonna touch that. We're not gonna touch the 2a. Now, here's how this multiplies in because some learners get a bit confused. This 2a is 2a over one, right? Because if there's nothing there, then it's over one. Now, when you multiply the seven over three into that, the top goes with the top and the bottom goes with the bottom. So the just remember that. Um, and so there I've just summarized it. So when multiplying two fractions, top goes with top and bottom goes with bottom, okay? So we're gonna multiply the seven and the two A because they are the two tops. And so that's gonna become 14 A. And then you multiply the two bottoms, which is three times one, which is just three. Now we're gonna multiply the seven over three and the one over two. So once again, the top goes with the top. So seven times one is seven. And then the bottom goes with the bottom, which is six. And then we just have plus A like that. Now, all of a sudden, this has become a question just like what we had in the previous lesson where there are fractions. So we'll first just go put these over one and over one. Now we look at the denominators and we would like those denominators to be the same. So a common denominator, I mean, you could use like 12, 18, but even the number six will work. So we can say lowest common denominator. Uh, well, actually just the common denominator. We don't just say the lowest one. It must be six or it can be six. So that means we're gonna multiply this one by two, and then we're gonna multiply the top by two, because what you do at the bottom, you must do at the top, times by six, times by six. We're just trying to get all of them to become a six. This we don't need to do anything with, and then we times this by six, and times this by six. And so now we end up with minus 70. Now I'm not gonna say over six, because in the previous lesson, we spoke about that in detail. We said that when the denominators are all the same, and you're busy with an equation, then you don't need to keep writing the denominator, okay? So I'm just gonna leave out the denominator now. This is gonna give us 12a, 14 times two is 28, a plus seven plus six a. Now we are back at the very first lesson of this chapter where you've just got variables and numbers and now you just need to move things around. So you see how we're building on top of previous lessons and previous steps. So what we can now do is just take, I'm gonna take all the variables to the right and I'm gonna take all the numbers to the left. So on the left-hand side, we would end up with minus 70 minus seven because when this one comes over, it becomes negative. And then on the right-hand side, we have 28a plus 6a minus 12a because that was a plus, but now it becomes a negative. So on the left-hand side, we have minus 77. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna end up with 22a. Now you just divide this side by 22 and you do the same to this side. And so A is gonna be negative 77 over 22. And then you need to simplify that. So you could put that on the calculator. Um, and what we should eventually find is that A, once you've simplified, should be negative seven over two. So here's our next example. And what we can see is that there's definitely a whole bunch of fractions, right? So it's definitely a question with fractions. And then we also have a bracket. So what we'll do is we need to get rid, let, what I suggested in the previous example is let's get rid of the brackets first. So what we'll have to do is multiply this over here into the bracket. And what we said just now was that the top times, to, the top must go, you multiply that with the top, and then the bottom multiplies with the bottom. Remember that these denominators do not have to be the same when you are multiplying. It is just a coincidence that those are now the same. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply um, this and this so long. And so minus 11 times by minus two, minus 11 times minus two is gonna be positive 22k, and then three times three is nine. Okay, now I'm gonna multiply this and this, so the top times top and an O, negative and a negative becomes a positive. And then 11 times three is 33. And then three times two is six. Remember, these two numbers do not have to be the same when multiplying like that. And then this minus one over two and all the others stay the same. 
Now we can just make sure that the denominators are the same. So we can just look at the denominators. And the fastest way to find the denominator or the common denominator is to look at the biggest number, which is a nine. And you count a nine. So nine, does that work? No, it won't work because number two or, or the number two cannot become a nine. So then you go to the next multiple, 18, and that's the one. All of those numbers can turn into 18. So let's use that as our common denominator. There we go. So we'll multiply this one by two and the top one by two, this one by three and the top by three, this one by nine and the top by nine, this one by two, this one by two, this one by six and this one by six. Oh, we could have, from the previous lesson, we could have rewritten this in a better way. Let's actually do that quickly. Remember we said there's an, a more comfortable way to write it like that. And now we've just said we're gonna multiply this one by six and multiply this one by six. Okay, so now 22 times two is 44, so we can say 44K. Now remember, I don't have to write the denominator because I know that when the denominators are all gonna be the same, I can just leave that out. And then 33 times three is 99, one times nine is nine. Uh, 43 times two is 86, and then eight times six is 48K. Now we can just move all the variables to one side, all the numbers to the other side, but now you guys are probably experts at this. So I'm gonna move that number to the right. This would go to the left. So on the left, we're going to have 99 minus 9 minus 86 because we're bringing this one over. And then on the right-hand side, we've got a 48K and then minus a 44K like that. And so here we can just work all this out. So 99 minus 9 is 90 minus 86 would give us 4. And then on the right-hand side, we end up with 48 minus 44, which is just 4. And so we divide here by four, divide here by four, and we get a final answer of k equals one. What makes this one a little bit more interesting compared to the previous ones that we've just done is that this one has fractions, but now it also has brackets, but there are two brackets. So it just makes it a little bit more interesting, but it doesn't change anything. Uh, so our first step is still gonna be multiply out the brackets. Now, I've noticed a lot of learners get a bit stuck when they have a number like this. They don't know what to do. They're like, okay, Kevin said top goes with top and bottom goes with this bottom, but this one doesn't have. So should I just multiply the two with the three and then also the two with the two? And that's what a lot of learners do and it's actually not correct. Remember, this two can be written as two over one. There we go. Now it has a top and it now has a bottom. Okay, so let's go multiply that out. So it's one over two plus, now we're gonna multiply this with this. So top goes with top, bottom goes with bottom. So it's gonna become six X over two. And then we're now gonna multiply this one and this one. So that's just gonna become two over two. And then we're gonna multiply this and this. So top goes with top, which is then gonna be negative five. See, I like to put this minus over there. So that's a negative five X over six. And then I'm gonna multiply this and this. So a negative multiplied with a positive is a negative. So you can say, and, and you don't have to, you can put that negative there. Okay, so that's gonna be a negative um, three over four. There we go, now we have denominators. So let's just circle those. And we wanna turn those into a common denominator. So as I said just now, you can take the number six and because that's the biggest number and then use that to help you quickly find the denominator. So six, will that work? No. So what's the next multiple of six? 12. And would 12 work? Yes, it would. All of these numbers can turn into a 12. So we can multiply this one by six, multiply this one by six, multiply this by six, multiply that one by six, multiply this by six, multiply that by six, multiply this one by two, by two, by three, and by three. All right, so what we now end up with is six over 12, 36X over 12, 12 over 12 equals to negative 10X over 12, and then minus nine over 12. Okay, so now, oh, we didn't even have to write all the denominators. Um, remember, what I showed you just now is that we already learned in the previous lesson that if, the, if it's an equation and the denominators are all the same, we don't have to show it. So there we go, I took away the denominators. Now we just do the normal stuff. So I'm gonna bring all the variables over to the left and then I'm gonna take all these numbers over to the right. So on the left-hand side, we'd have 36X plus 10X. 
And then on the right hand side we'd have minus 9, minus 6 and minus 12. And then on the left it's 46x. And on the right, what's that, minus 27? Yep. And so to get x alone, you divide this side by 46, and you divide this side by 46, and so you end up with x equals to minus 27 over 46. And if you try to simplify that, you'll realize that it cannot be simplified any further. And here is our last example for this lesson. So once again, we've definitely got fractions, and we also have two brackets. So first step, let's get rid of the brackets. Remember that this is a over 1, and then this one's a bit weird because it also doesn't have anything at the bottom, so you can also just make that over 1, and we might as well just do it for this one as well. So now we just do top times top and bottom times bottom, so that's going to be minus 2x over 1, and then we're going to multiply this and this, so top times top would be negative 2, bottom times bottom, 3. And then we carry on. So top times top, bottom times bottom. So that's going to become minus 3x over 2. And then we're going to multiply this one and this one. Remember, a negative multiplied with a negative becomes a positive. So that's going to become plus 3 over 4. And then on the right-hand side, we don't have to do anything. Whoops, I don't want to write it like that. Let's put it in the better way. 3x over 2 and 1x over 2. Okay, now we look at the denominators. And remember, the best way is just to look at the largest one, which is the 4, and look at, let that be your limiting one. So can the number 4 work? No, it won't. Can the num Now, what's the next multiple of 4? It's 8. Would that work? No, it won't. What's the next multiple? 12. That one would work. So we can say that our common denominator will be a 12. So we're going to multiply this. So we're just going to try to get all of them to 12. So this one by 12. Always remember to do top and bottom. Now, we don't need to go write the denominator, so the top part will just be negative 24x for that one. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 6 is 18, but there is an x over there. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 6 is 18. And 1 times 6 is 6x. Okay, now we just put all the variables on the one side. So I'm going to put all the variables on the right-hand side for this one. And then I'm going to put all the... Oh, the numbers are already on the left. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we're going to have minus 8 plus 9. On the right hand side we're going to have 18x plus 6x plus 24x plus another 18x. So I've, I've brought these two or brought these two over. I always get confused with brought and bought and which one's which. I'll be honest. <laughs> so okay so what we now um, what we now do is just simplify. So minus 8 plus 9 is 1 and then on the right hand side we get 18 plus 6 plus 24, plus 18, and that's going to give us 66. Wow, this one's really random. And then if we had to go uh, divide, well, let me first show you the proper steps. Divide this side by 66, divide this side by 66. And so x would actually end up being a really weird answer of 1 over 66.